Okay, so this video is a bit of a weird one because I didn't plan on doing a tutorial for this project, but guess what? I had a blast playing around with different ways to make these tiny fake paintings and it was totally trial and error. So I thought, why not share the fun with you so you can learn from my mistakes? <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, guys. And if you're new here, I'm Stella and I'm all about crafting miniatures for Barbie's dollhouse using mostly paper. Now, I wanted to make some miniature paintings for my dollhouse nursery, but let's be honest, painting isn't my forte. It. So instead, I decided to design them on my laptop and printed them with my selfie, my usual go-to. However, the outcome was a tad too neat for my taste and the glossy finish made it look more like a print and I was aiming for a hand painted vibe for these paintings, so I switched to my laser printer. And as you can see, the quality is certainly not the same, but printing on copy paper allowed me to test out a few different methods to transform a simple print into a fake hand-painted artwork. So first thing, I got all the paintings to size. Then I took a piece of paperboard, and I think this was like the back of some notepad, and I used it as the base for the first painting. And of course, while I was using my tape glue, I accidentally tore the paper because, well, I'm a klutz. And I was hoping I could piece it back together and that it wouldn't show, but... well. Now, for this first painting, I was going for a sort of acrylic or oil painting feel, and I tried a very easy technique typically done with Mod Podge, but since I didn't have any at home, I opted for tacky glue. And all you need to do is slather a generous amount of glue on the print and then spread it all around with a brush. I found that a small brush with firm bristles works best, since we really want those brush strokes to stand out. I tried to make the brush strokes as small as possible, and I followed a sort of cross hatch type pattern and since I'm super impatient I use a hit gun to speed up the drying process and yep the tip of my hit gun is in fact melted and this is a lesson learned not to buy certain things off AliExpress you live you learn and here's the final result I really like how textured the surface is I mean those brush strokes really pop but I felt like the finish turned out a tad too glossy for my liking and this is what it looks like if I turn off my lamps under natural light and as you can see it's still looking quite shiny I thought maybe the glossiness was due to the heat gun so I gave it another shot this time letting the glue air dry and in the end I have to say I didn't notice any particular difference except perhaps the brush strokes are a little less visible. I think this technique would look a lot better with a different painting style, like something a bit more vintage-y, perhaps? Next, I wanted to see if this technique could work using a more budget-friendly white glue, like good old Elmer's glue or similar. Well, I pretty much repeated the same process, dried the glue with my heat gun, and here's the outcome. Honestly, there isn't a lot of difference, is there? The brush strokes might be a little less textured, and you can see this better under natural light, but the shine is still there. So next up, I tried a matte gel medium, and this is when I realized that gel mediums are way more fluid than white glue, and well, I ended up pouring far too much on the painting, so I scraped off the medium in excess and spread a smaller quantity. And as I did, I noticed the paper getting all wet and wrinkly. I figured that perhaps it was due to basically soaking it in the medium earlier, so I gave it a second try using less medium, but unfortunately the paper still wrinkled, though not as much as with the first attempt. And once dry, the brush strokes on these two paintings weren't visible at all. So yeah, this was a total fail. My next idea was to combine both glue and medium, so basically I covered the entire painting with tacky glue, using small brush strokes just like before, dried it with my heat gun, and then coated everything with a layer of gel medium. The result turned out much better than my attempt using just a medium, the brush strokes are subtle but still visible, and the finish is quite matte. Now for the next set of paintings, I aimed for a watercolor effect, so I decided to experiment with an image transfer technique using the same gel medium from before. First, I picked a piece of lightweight cardstock with a nice texture to it, then I spread the medium over the cardstock and then over the print. I immediately placed the print onto the cardstock, pressing it down with my fingers first and then with a ruler to make sure that there were no air bubbles. Once again, I used my heat gun to speed up the drying process. Then I brushed some water on the paper until it was completely wet. And at this point, I started to gently rub off the paper, and in the video this is sped up, but it actually took a few minutes to remove all of it. 
must say I'm really really pleased with the outcome, this is my favorite so far. I wanted to test if this technique could be done with a cheaper white glue, so I tried again. And while technically the image was transferred onto the cardstock, it missed quite a few parts and I also noticed that the paper felt quite sticky to the touch, although it did eventually dry after a while. I thought that perhaps I was a little too enthusiastic while rubbing off the paper, so I made a second attempt, and this time being far more gentle. The result was definitely better, but still less defined compared to the one made using the medium. It's still a good option though. Now I enjoyed the image transfer method so much, I wanted to experiment a bit more and my next idea was to try it on a canvas, well, a fake canvas that is. To make one, I simply took a piece of white fabric, originally from an old napkin, cut it to the size of a painting and glued it to a piece of paperboard. Then I covered it with a layer of acrylic gesso. And once dry, there was a giant black stain here. I think some of the glue passed through the other side of the fabric and stained it. But hopefully it'll be covered by the image transfer. Just as before, I brushed the medium on the canvas and on the print. Place the print on the canvas and press it evenly with my fingers and a ruler. I sped up the drying process with my heat gun, then I brushed some water all over the surface, and then I began to rub off the paper. And by the way, if you're curious to test the products I've been using in this video, I'll have them linked in the description for you. And this is the final outcome. Not bad, but some parts didn't completely transfer and the little stain-like thingy is still visible. I decided to give it another shot, but this time I didn't cover the canvas with acrylic gesso, and I also changed the way I made the canvas cutting the paper bird first to the size of the print, and then covering it with the fabric. I hoped that this way the front of the fabric would end up stained. And truth be told, from now on I kind of hurried through the process because my phone's battery was dying and I really wanted to finish filming. And this brings us to the final result. A not great, huh? Most of the print is completely gone. And yeah, I should know better than to hurry things when it comes to making miniatures. I gave it a second try the next day, and this time I did it properly without rushing it. I even put more effort into making the canvases, folding the fabric over the edges instead of simply cutting it. I covered one of the canvases with gesso and left the other one bare. I started with a naked canvas, allowing the medium to air dry instead of using my heat gun. I rubbed off the paper as gently as I could. And the result is much better, but still some parts didn't quite transfer. And here I'm trying again with the acrylic gesso covered canvas, and this time I even whipped out a pair of tweezers to be more precise. And this is the result. I totally love it. Isn't it cute? I really like it. My next experiment was to combine the image transfer on canvas technique with the fake brush stroke trick I tested at the beginning of the video. I used the canvas covered with acrylic gesso since it seems to work better and transferred the print as usual. Then I applied a bit of tacky glue to the painting and began to spread it around in small brush strokes. My hope is that the glue won't look as glossy if applied to a canvas instead of paper. The result was fairly underwhelming. It's not bad per se, but the brush strokes aren't particularly visible and the finish is still quite shiny. I also gave the medium another shot, using a generous amount this time, thinking that the canvas wouldn't wrinkle like the paper did. However, I wasn't a fan of the result. It lacks texture and there are some weird whitish lumps here and there that I truly don't care for. I gotta tell you guys, gel medium really isn't right for this type of technique. To frame the canvases, I simply used some coffee stirrers and for the smaller painting, some craft picks. Oh, and by the way, drop a comment below if you'd enjoy more videos like this one in the future. I'm always experimenting and playing around with fun crafts, but I rarely share them on YouTube because I'm not sure if it's interesting enough, so let me know. I painted some of the frames with a mix of acrylic paint and water and left the others natural. 
Oh, and if you're planning to make a little dollhouse nursery yourself, you should totally check out this playlist next. And this is all for today's video. Until next time, bye!